Welcome to today's baseball game featuring the Taft Tigers and the Sandy M. Christian Eagles as we've got a nice game here. It's Oregon Coast weather today as it's a little overcast, maybe a few sprinkles, only the good kind of sprinkles, right? The kind that go on top of cupcakes. On the mound today for the Tigers in this rematch, it's going to be Eli DeMello. He pitched a few innings in the first game between these two. It'll be sophomore Joe Mikadish on the mound for the San Diego Christian Eagles. He started on the hill for the Eagles in the first game, of course. That was a seven-inning thriller. It went back and forth all game long between those two teams before the freshman third baseman Eli Kennel had a walk-off game-running hit to win it in the bottom bottom of the seventh, 11 to 10, as we were able to get part of that game on Twitter, but we had audio problems, apologize for that. It was an exciting game, one of the things I said, but no one was able to hear outside of those sitting right around me was the fact that uh, if you thought that you were a bad team because you lost that game or you thought you were a great team because you won it, well, uh, you don't want to get a big head of yourself. And it was just one game. And for these teams, a little bit different uh, direction since that time. Tigers are 3-5. and five. Sandy M. Christian is 3-2. and two. As we take a quick look at the Eagles batting lineup, it will be Logan Beam starting things off, followed by Ben Galserin, then Ryland Kutch, Patrick Otis, Eli Kennel, Mason Worth, Vanden Hagen, Joe McKadish, and Josh Verdine. So it'll be Logan Beam first man up for the, Ti for the Eagles against the Tigers' Eli DeMello, who's on the hill. And first pitch hits the inside corner. Strike one for DeMello. As for Eli, he's able to get back into the swing of things on that three-day uh, mountain tournament at Madras as he gets beam out in front swing and strike two. 0-2 oh, count here against the leadoff man, Logan Beam. For the Tigers, it's the freshman, Caden Heinemann, at catcher at first base plays Kimbrough. Here's the 0-2. It's low. Good stop in the turf there by Caden. So first base Blaze, just Blaze Kimbrough, and Ethan Thomas at the second base. Darius at third. This pitch gets him looking on the outside corner. Strike out number one for DeMello as he leads the team now with 19 strikeouts through 17 innings of work. First out of the inning brings up Ben Galser in the second baseman. That pitch inside just misses ball one for Galserin. This young man had a solid game first time. Of course, with 21 runs scored in the first game between these two teams, a lot of people played well. Pitchers feel otherwise on that one as that one is fouled off. Evens it up. Strike one on deck. Ryland Kutch followed by the shortstop Patrick Otis. Of course, Cody Knott at shortstop in left field, Lucas Heinemann, Tyee Fisher in center, and Trenton Fisher out in right field. And time is called by Galserin at the plate. So the lefty steps back in, junior against junior. And that one misses away, ball two. Two and one count now for Galserin. Some numbers for Eli on the year. This pitcher we said he's now 17 innings through with 19 strikeouts. Got a 4.2 earned run average. So that one's outside. 3-1 count now for Galserin. Nice cool day. Wind is coming in from center field. Here's the 3-1 and misses. Ball four. Galserin's safely aboard. So with Galserin at first, our first baseman, Ryland Kutch, steps in. So Taft Tigers, see if the infield here gets something strong, if they can turn to. It's Eli throwing from the stretch. That pitch inside misses, ball one. First time these two teams played. Blaze was on the mound and got through quickly. Tigers are able to get on board in the bottom of the first as that pitch again misses inside. 2-0 count. 
That's definitely Oregon weather today for this game. Tomorrow, if it happens, the Dayton Pirates will be coming to town. This one down the middle, swinging strike one for Eli. So wants to get back into this count here with a 2-1 count. Opportunity to do that right now. Galserin, not a big lead over at first base. He's got decent speed. This pitch gets the outside part. 2-2 two -two count now for DeMello. Galserin perhaps more quick than he is fast. A 2-2 from DeMello. Curveball misses high. Full count now. For Taft, they do not want to see base runners. Of course, uh, big news for the Tigers is a uh, potential loss for the rest of the season of senior Cam Kessler. As Galserin takes off swinging, strike two. Galserin will get the stolen base, but there's now two outs in the inning by a two strikeouts from junior pitcher Eli DeMello. So Otis will come to the plate with a runner in scoring position in Galserin. And apparently uh, Otis will not be coming to the plate as interference is going to be called, uh, perhaps at the plate by Rylan Kutch. As you see, perhaps the umpire speaking with Mason Worth about the call, just explaining it to him right there. So it won't be Otis. It'll be an interference call, and we are done here. Going into the bottom of the first now, it's San Am Christian Eagles 0, Taft Tigers 0. We'll pause while Joe McKadish takes his warm-up throws. So as we come back here in the bottom of the first inning, Tigers were able to get up 1-2-3 for Eli DeMello's interference was called on the catcher or before the uh, against the catcher Caden Heinemann, and that's why uh, Tigers got out of that. So Trent Fisher on the air hitting 375, nine hits, leads the team with seven walks on the year. Solid numbers for Little Fish as he had a great trip across the mountains as he's been moving to the leadoff spot part of that was because Darius with some spring break plans zero getting his suntan game on so the lefty McKadish the sophomore uh, against Trenton the right fielder first pitch from McKadish is low and gets away from Worth so if Tigers can get on the base pass that's a pitch they'll like to see of course, with nobody on the bases, not as much emphasis by Worth to block and protect. As this one's hit on to the third baseman, Kennel, as he fires to first base, and Ryland Kutch makes the grab for out number one. 5 3 ground out gets the first out for the Tigers, brings up Eli DeMello. He's pitching today. Here's his numbers. 480 leads the team, 12 hits leads the team, 10 runs scored, 5 ribbies, 6 stolen bases, and 2 walks for the sophomore. Looks at ball 1 from McKadish. Eli, an honorable mention All-State performer last year. The 1-0, swung on back to Kennel, and this one gets through him and E5 it will be as Eli gets on base. 
Brings up Cody Knott, the shortstop. Cody also having a great year so far, 375. He leads the team with runs scored and runs driven in, 11 apiece. He's got extra base capability. We'll see if Coach Hilgers elects to send DeMello in motion now with a base runner for not. One down here, bottom first, first pitch high to Cody. On deck is the big unit, Tyee Fisher, and then in the hole is the first baseman, Blaze Kimbrough. So with wind coming in from center field, Nikadish from the stretch, big high kick. This one's hit high and out of play by Knott. Evens the count up one apiece. So Tigers are once again looking to get on the board first. Last time they did it in the top of the first, this time looking to do it in the bottom of the first against the Eagles. This pitch is fouled the other way as Eli took off after contact. Didn't appear to be a hit and run. One two count now for McKadish. Sophomore on the mound. Stands in around 6 7. And from the look of it, he's got black and orange shoes on. Maybe it's just the turf. As he's going to throw back to first base, Kutch applies the tag. DeMello back in time. So one, two count, one down here, bottom of the first inning. DeMello at first, Cody not at the plate. As this one is fouled off the catcher, Mason Worth. Quick look defensively. You got Mason Worth behind the plate, Ryland Kutch at Third at first, Ben Galserin at second, Eli Kennel at third, Patrick Oda shortstop, left fielder Josh Verdine, center fielder Vanden Hagen, and right fielder Logan Beam. Do the one two again. This time it's going to go out to the fence as Makadish tries to throw, and DeMello's going to round for third. Here's the throw. It's offline, and that allows Eli to go 180 feet off of. Well, it appears to be a wild throw from McAdish. So that'll go down as an E1 after the E5. And now Eli is all the way at third. It's a 1-2 count for Cody. We talked about how he leads the team with runs batted in. Just got a whole lot easier now with Eli 90 feet away. This one's hit hard into right center field as Hagen looks like he will set up. There's the catch. Here's Eli sprint for 90 feet. The relay throw will not be in time as Knott gets the sack fly to bring home Eli DeMello. So the Tigers now have two down, but they've got the 1-0 lead. Brings up Tyee Fisher. Quick look at Tyee's numbers on the year. Hitting 308 with eight hits. Leads, he's second on the team in runs batted in. And he's going opposite, but this one out of play. 0-1 count for Tyee. As they don't have a number 22 baseball jersey. They didn't make one just for him. So he splits it in half, goes with 11. As he'll... Take a quick time. So Tyee trying to start another rally by getting on base. And that one gets the outside part of the plate. McAdish now 0-2 count with two down. Thrown from the windup with nobody on base now. So the 0-2. As finds the pitch he likes from Worth. Here's the payoff. Tyee takes it. He's going the opposite way. Kutch makes a great grab. Is anybody there? No. Tyee outraces Makadish. 6'6". Six, six, those long legs beat out Makadish to the bag. And it'll be an infield single for Tyee Fisher. So up steps Blaze Kimbrough. And for Blaze, third on the team and runs batted in with seven so far. He's trying to up that batting average on the year. On deck is Caden Heinemann, the freshman catcher. So, Mikadish go back to the stretch with Tyee on first. He's going to go back to first with the throw. That's what got him in trouble last time against Eli. As Coach King, you can't see it there in the corner of the screen, but he's talking to his runner there, Tyee, telling him what he wants to see with Mikadish's leg action. As he's going to the plate this time, it's inside for ball one. Blaze 
He's kind of the opposite of Cam. He throws left, bats right. Cam, he bats uh, left, throws right. The 1-0. Again, inside. It gets away from Worth. This is going to send Taie to second where he's standing up. Uh, we'll call that a passed ball. Sends Taie to second base. We mentioned Blaze. Third on the team in ribbies right now. He's got a guy on second seeing if he can trade places with him now with two outs and a 2-0 count. Kadish from the stretch. No wind right now. Blaze hits this in the gap at short as Otis gets there. The throw in time to end the inning with the 6-3 ground out. But for the Taft Tigers, they get the first run of the game. They now lead the San Diego Christian Eagles by a score of 1-0 as we head now into the top of the second. We'll pause while... We adjust everything here as we're doing uh, the best we can with this fancy little scoreboard here. Now says Eagle zero, Tigers one, top of the second. All right, so it'll be Patrick Otis, 4 5 6, then Eli Kennel on deck, and Mason Worth in the hole here in the top of the second inning now with the Tigers on top of the Eagles, 1 to 0. As DeMello, first pitch strike against Otis, gets him swinging. As Eli had two strikeouts, first one looking to be him, second one. Ryland Kutch, there was also interference involved against the catcher, Caden Heidman, and so that caused runner Ben Galserin to be out. This one's hit to Cody at shortstop, makes the one hop. There's the throw to first. Blaze is able to keep his toe on the bag and make the out. Great play by Blaze there for the 6-3 ground out. Brings up the freshman third baseman, Eli Kennel. As this is going to be a talented guy, he's batting in the five spot for Coach Matt Nosak. We already talked about it in the pregame about how he had the walk-off winner. This is his first at-bat today here against DeMello. Comes inside. That one misses. 1-0 count. So this is a tape delay broadcast of the San Am Christian Eagles and the Taft Tigers. Pitch number two is low. 2-0 count now to Kennel. On deck, Mason Worth in the hole, center fielder Vanden Hagen. As the Eagles, 6-2 on the season. This pitch hit down the first base line. Blaze there for the scoop. Flashing a little bit of leather at first. Three unassisted for just Blaze down there. Brings up the catcher, Mason Worth. And so to give you an idea just where some of these teams are, Stand after this pitch. We'll take a look at the OSAA top 10 standings as that pitch skips into Caden for ball one. So here's a look at the top 10 rankings according to OSAA. So that's where SC comes in at seven and the Tigers come in at eight. A 1 0 swinging strike one to Worth. And then a little bit different in the coaches' poll. We'll show you that in a moment. 1-1 one, one count for DeMello. This one's hit and just out of play. A little right off the knob of the bat from the look of it. So a 1-2 count here for Worth. DeMello looking for his third strikeout of the game. He had a 10-strikeout game across the mountains during the Madras tournament. Curveball hit hard into left field. Lucas Heinemann out there. He's chasing it down. It goes off the glove, E7. So Worth is going to get to second. 
So each team now with a fielding error for the Tigers. They're hoping it doesn't come around to score. Brings up Vanden Hagen now. First pitch to Haugen is a strike. Now here's a look at the coaches' top ten. As Brookings, number one in both, SC comes up tied for third in that one. Taft rises all the way to fifth in the coaches' poll. As Eli comes back inside, 0-2 count. So again, trying to get this one himself. As the wind took that one further to the line by Worth, and it got away from Lucas. The 0-2 for DeMello down the middle. This one's going to be hit practically straight to Ty. He comes running forward, makes the grab for the final out of the inning. So does no damage for the Tigers. The Eagles strand one on the bases. Going into the bottom of the second, it is the Tigers leading the Eagles 1-0. All right, as we come back, it'll be the six, seven, eight hitters for the Tigers. Caden Heinemann at the plate, followed by third baseman Darius Smith, and then the left fielder Lucas Heinemann. So Tigers leading the Eagles 1-0 to zero here in the bottom of the second. As that first pitch gets away from both the pitcher, McKadish, as that one was outside, and the catcher, uh, Worth, unable to make the play behind the plate. And that one, this time, does hit the outside part of the plate. 1-1 one, one count now for McKadish against Caden. And for Coach Hilders, it's this area of the lineup that really needs to come through for the Tigers, especially with the loss of Cam Kessler. As Caden swung on, fouls a piece of it. So one, two count for Caden. As a freshman thrust into a role, perhaps wasn't expected to play beginning of the year. Perhaps I saw him more as a utility player, but now he is thrust into a full-time role. As he's got himself a two, two count. Freshman against sophomore as we got time right now called. So Caden steps back in, looking to be the first Tigers base runner of the inning. That pitch is low. So base hit ball four coming up here for Caden Hyman. That's how the Tigers hope it plays out. As dugout perhaps a little bit noisier than it was last week. That one misses outside. So Caden gets on the bases. First runner for the Tigers and brings up Darius Smith. So Darius, second on the team in stolen bases. He'd like to have his second hit of the season come right now. Be a good time for it. So runner on first, Darius. About to step back in. Caden, decent speed. He's If something gets to the fence, he's expected to take second. Darius is going to show a bunt. That one skips to Worth behind the plate. Does a good job of blocking that one. So 1-0 count. Tigers, good opportunity here for them to start trying to put some more runs on the board against the Eagles. So we said 21 runs scored last time. Going to go back to first base. 
And again, Tigers get back in time. Caden standing up. So big lefty thrown from the stretch. Of course, as a left-hander, you always have that advantage going to first as Caden is hiding behind the chain link pole over there at first base. High leg kick caused him to go back to first too, and he gets a strike at the plate. So, Coach King trying to issue some words of advice for his freshman base runner who's playing it close to the bag right now. No need to with Darius, a foot outside. He steps back in. 1-1 one, one count, going back to first. Kutch makes the catch. Tag is applied, not in time. A little bit of wind coming in from center field now. Expect the clouds and everything to get better as the game goes on. Darius shows bunt. It's high. He pulls it back. Ball two. So 2-1 two count now for the sophomore. Darius Smith is zero. Trying to get Caden as far as he can, get himself on base as well here. Of course, see if he shows bunt again. Then the name of the game is to advance Caden to second. He shows bunt, pulls it back, strike called, 2-2 count. And Coach Hilgers. That could have been uh, Darius either just trying to play games with McAdish as if uh, that was a called bunt attempt. We liked him seeing put bat on ball with 2-2 two -two count here. See if they go with the bunt. Of course, it has. To, you gotta hit it if you bunt with two strikes. He shows it. He pulls it back. Outside ball three. So back to back full counts for McAdish. He lost Caden last time with a walk. Can Darius draw a walk here? The 3 2. In the dirt. Darius pulled it back, and the call is head down to first. So, back to back walks for the Tigers brings up the left fielder, Lucas Heinemann, on deck is the second baseman, Ethan Thomas, before we get back to the top of the lineup, which is where the Tigers definitely want to be. Their first four is their top four right now for Coach Hilgers. These next few games before next week's uh, league play begins is time to see uh, who else is ready to play baseball. Lucas shows bunt, puts it down. It's a good one. Worth gets to it. There's the throw to first. It's in time, but it's a solid sack bunt for Lucas Hyman as he advances both Caden and Darius. Caden now at third, Darius at second. Just one out here for the Tigers as second baseman Ethan Thomas steps in on deck is the right fielder, Trenton Fisher. Let's take a look at Ethan's numbers so far on the season. As he's got four runs scored, he does have one run driven in. He's got a chance here to drive two in if he can really get a hold of something. So that one misses outside ball one. One-oh count from McAdish misses outside ball two. And for Ethan, at this point, definitely gonna wait for McAdish to throw him a strike. Gets the signal from Coach Hilgers down at third. Just one out here in the bottom of the second. 1-0 game. That one misses outside. Ball three. Time is called as the catcher Mason Worth is going to go out and talk to his pitcher with a 3-0 count. Following that will be the top of the Tigers batting lineup. Uh, so far, the Tigers have one hit. They have one run scored. They have two sacrifices. Most importantly, they have the one run lead with two on the bases. 3-0 count. 
This one gets the inside part strike one as Thomas looks back to see if that indeed was the call. So 3-1. Here's the payoff. Swung on, strike two. So McKadish has worked himself right back into the count here against the nine-man Thomas. So McKadish with a full count, throwing from the windup. And he gets the strikeout against Thomas. So he's got down 3-0. And then he comes back to get the first strikeout of the game for the Tigers. It's now two outs. So whereas a fly ball would have likely scored you one, now you've got to get something through cleanly. Trent Fisher last time grounded out to third base. First pitch ball. And as we said, Trenton, it's one of the areas where he leads the team so far is in walks with two free passes issued so far for McKadish. Still just 1-0, bottom second. As Trenton fouls that one out of play along the first base side, 1-1 one, one count now. DeMello last time, he had a hard hit ball to third base. He's on deck. That pitch misses outside, 2-1 count for Trenton. So Trenton trying to get another run on the board for the Tigers. This pitch comes inside, 3-1. Otherwise, he's going to load the bases for DeMello, who came into today hitting 480. The 3-1. This one's hit high. Is it going to get out of play? It is. Is worth turns, watches, and that hit a car. We could hear that one. So 3-2 count again. The fourth time this inning, it's been a 3-2 count for Makeda. She walked the first two, struck out Thomas last time. Tigers have Caden Heidman 90 feet away, Darius Smith 180 feet away. This one's hit up the middle by Trenton. Is this going to score two? Darius gets the stop signal, and it appears to be a good call as McKadish got the relay, but not before Littlefish has an RBI single to score Caden Heidman from third. It advances Darius to third, so the Tigers have runners on the corners now leading. Two to zero. So Mello steps to the plate. Quick look there. 480, 12 hits on the season. 10 runs, five runs batted in. And they're going to go to first. As they know that uh, if there's a stolen base attempt, then likely, especially at the high school level, if you don't have a catcher with a rocket for an arm, that you're typically then going to try and play off the guy at third base in those situations with two outs. Got a rocket arm for a catcher. You'll make that play. Trenton's going to take off. They're going to throw it short to Galserin, and Darius goes back to third and takes it right in the back. So um, what we just mentioned happened. So a stolen base for Trenton Fisher. He's now in scoring position at second. It's a 1-0 count for DeMello at the plate with two down. So same situation that Trenton was in just a moment ago. Can he trade places with Little Fish? He gets this one out along the right field side behind the Eagle dugout. So 1-1 one, one count for Eli. He had the game's first run. Caden has scored the second run on deck, Cody Knott. No wind right now, looking at the flag. As that one in on the hands against Eli, fouls it off. One two count now for the junior, trying to help his cause out on the mound. So Darius at third in foul territory. You got Kennel playing back. Everyone's playing back in the infield with two down. That pitch is high to Eli, ball two. So 
And for the Tigers, we mentioned coming into this inning, can the bottom of the lineup produce? And they did as they got back to the top of the order for these guys to start doing something with it. Eli uh, might have been, uh, he's got to protect the plate in that situation. Of course, it's hard to tell from up here in our nice spot sometimes where exactly that spot is. But 2-2 two -two count for DeMello as he used the golf swing to protect the plate. Two on with two down, 2-2 two -two count, and Kadish. That pitch is high for Eli. As Hilders calls out, base hit, ball four. You don't want to put Eli at first. It's not really a difference between Eli and Cody Knott. They'll each hurt you in different ways. The full count pitch misses. As Darius eyeballs it, but he's going to stay at third base wisely. So Cody Knott is going to come to the plate with the bases juiced. He's already got one RBI. He's got 12 now. So I'll have to update my file. I'm not that talented yet to do everything on this broadcast, like update those stats in game. Although watch me call myself out and do it. But Cody... Came in hitting 375 today as his first plate appearance was a sack fly out to center field. Uh, it was a good play by Hagen, but it scored DeMello, who advanced to third base. He got on via the throwing error from Eli Kennel at third, but then McKadish tried to play over to first, and he got caught thrown past his first baseman, Kutch, and Eli didn't just take second but third. This time, though, Cody Knott's got bases full. So five full counts, three walks, a single, and a strikeout for the Tigers. Is not immediately takes first pitch. Kennel gets it. He's going to throw to first. Cody dives. He's safe. Infield single. It gets away from Kutch. And the runners advance once more. It scores two. Tigers four, Eagles zero as Cody Knott, give him another two RBIs on the play, and the Tigers are now up 4-0. to zero. As he beat that throw out in time, Eli's now down at third base on the play. Trenton scored from second. Darius scored easily. Two down for Tyee Fisher at the plate right now. As Got to take that down. Sorry about that. Couldn't see how great the play was. So here's a quick look at Ty's numbers. 308 on the season. He had a single, though, so he's up to nine hits. His average has gone up after that play. On deck, Blaze Kimbrough, 1-0 count. He's going to throw back to first as Cody gets back in time. Again, you got great speed on the bases for the Tigers here. So Cody's going to try and get down to second base, and if they... Don't get the clean throw off. Eli may steal home. As there's the play, it's going to go. Eli is going to come home, and he's going to come up with the steal. So if I'm going to call it out, why don't I just say, Tai, why don't you put something over the North Lincoln Sanitary Service sign out there as Tigers now get the fifth run of the game. It's their fourth of the inning. They're up 5-0 to zero here against the Eagles in the bottom of the second with Cody Knott over at second base. And Cody's going to try and steal third, and he gets under the tag because Kennel was unable to make the catch cleanly. He got there in time from the look of it, but perhaps when the tag was applied, it, the snow cone there just came out of the glove. So for Fisher, he's got a 3-0 count at the plate. He's got Cody Knott all the way over at third base. And... The senior looking to make it a 6-0 game right here with a base hit. Instead, 3-0 count looks at strike one. So Cody with two stolen bases this inning. Puts himself in scoring position after a two RBI single. Ty swung on, foul tip into the glove. Full count now. And as we said, there have been uh, this will be now the sixth full count. McKadish is racking up the pitches here early on. 
That one's low and misses. Tai takes a base hit or a base on balls. Brings up Blaze Kimbrough, grounded out to Patrick Otis last time. Time is called by Coach Matt Nosak, and that appears to be the end of the day for Joe McAdish. So we'll take a quick pause, and we're going to throw up uh, right now Special District 1 standings so you can see uh, where things kind of look like based on uh, heading into next week's opening of league play. It'll be Sean Riley on the mound now, so one and two-thirds today for... McAdish. All right, so as we come back here in the bottom of the second inning, it's a 5-0 Tigers lead. As not sure why that isn't showing up for you right now. With the score, we are here in the second. Ty's going to get caught in a pickle. Is he going to steal second? Yes, he is if he stays on the bag, and he does. So Ty with the stolen base there. Just takes that one all on his own as Riley tried to get him into the pickle. So Kimbrough with two in scoring position right now. As gets a first pitch, swinging strike one, Blaze Kimbrough. He's trying to keep this rally alive. It started with the guy on deck, Caden Heinemann, the catcher. He drew a full count walk. The 0 1 for Riley in relief. This one's hit foul into the Tiger dugout. Looked like right inside the Tiger dugout, in fact. So 0 2 count now for Riley, who's come on. So two down. As Tigers are up 5 to 0. And he gets him looking for the strikeout as. It ends the threat for Joe McAdish, who goes one and two-thirds innings today. Gave up three hits, five runs with four walks and one strikeout. Tigers, though, lead the Eagles going into the top of the third, five to zero. So we wanted to update that there as Sean Riley will now just make the quick one-for-one -one substitution as he takes over for Joe McAdish. 
that last inning. So he gets the nod here in the top of the third. First pitch inside from DeMello to Riley. So Tigers are up 5-0 here, top of the third inning. That one hit right back up the middle. It's going to be the first base hit of the game allowed by DeMello. So that brings up Josh Verdine. And then will be the leadoff man, Logan Beam. So 8-9-1 for the Eagles. Not much wind coming out from center field right now as Verdine takes ball one. Verdine had a great play in left field in the first game between these two teams. As took a ball in foul territory, stolen at bat away from Cody Knott. As DeMello gets him swinging on the fastball. 1-1 one, one count. It's been a cloudy, overcast day, typical of the Oregon coast in the springtime, but we've got nice weather for baseball. It's dry. That one gets away from Eli, and that Caden unable to block that. That's a wild pitch. It'll send Riley down to second. So a 2 1 count now for Verdine at the plate before we going back to the top of the order. As Coach Matt Nosak over at third base. Eli throwing from the stretch. Right hander. That one's fouled. 2 2 count now for Verdine. With nobody out trying to manufacture the first run by playing small ball. We'll see if Coach Nosak elects to bunt with two strikes. We've seen the Tigers do it before. Saw Darius attempted. Darius, I want to say, drew a walk. He did, and then came around to score. Verdine, he's going to swing. Cody takes this, and he tried to do, tried to get the runner in the base pass, and as a result, he's unable to get the man at the plate. So, I'm marking that as an E6 in the book. So runners on the corners now for the Eagles with nobody out. As typically you just would have let Riley take third and go get Verdine at first. Now you got Beam struck out looking in his first at bat of the game. As Verdine takes off, Heinemann lets him go. So 1 0 count for Beam. This one's fouled, chopped away. First strike for Beam, 1-1 one, one count. As Coach Hilders always in the running for best defensive hands on the field for the coaches. On deck, Ben Galserin. One one fouled out of play once again. This time, Coach Matt Nosak fields it. So one two count. Another opportunity here for Eli. This time to manufacture an out all by himself. Keep those runners right where they are. Ooh, close pitch misses inside. Ball two. So a bit of wind moving from center field towards right field. The 2-2, two -two, high leg kick. This one's going to Darius, who chops it, and instead comes away the second error of the inning for the Tigers. So that scores Riley with runners on first and second now. As Darius wasn't sure if he wanted to take that or let it get by to Cody, and instead, kind of indecisive, leads to the third error of the game for the Tigers. As Gausser and way out in front on that pitch swinging, strike one. So first run of the game for the Eagles. 
Still no out. So one one count. That's Ryland Kutch is on deck. Then will be Patrick Otis. Galstern drew a walk last time. Kutch struck out. Uh, there was interference. And so Galstern was out at second. This one, Knuckler, is going to go foul as Eli watches it go foul. So goes to a 1-2 count for the Tigers. You know, might have had a chance to get Galstern out. Might have also uh, advanced runners to second and third on the plate. Now you got a chance perhaps to get Galserin out all by yourself. Keep those runners right where they are. So Eli throwing from the stretch. 1-2 for Galserin. As this one's hit to Ethan Thomas, he's going to go to first base and get the out. Unable to get that one out of his glove quick enough in time. More importantly for the Tigers, though, they get the out after being unable to get a few easy ones. So first out for the Tigers. It does advance the runners to second and third on the play. So Ryland Kutch to the plate. Swung, and this one's going to be a single that scores for Dine. So Lucas throws into Darius, trying to get him at third, unable. So RBI single for Ryland Kutch. That scores Josh Verdine. So runners on the corner with one out. This one's hit hard to third, and it gets by a diving Darius. Back-to-back -back RBI singles, and this one's going to get by Lucas as he overplays it. And that's going to score a runner all the way from first. Three errors in the inning for the Tigers. So Ryland Kutch scored all the way from first base on that play. You would have thought at best you would have got him at third. Tigers have to adjust now. They've given up four runs here. And this is what we saw in the first game. A lot of runs scored between these two. So it's... Five to four here in the top of the third. This one's hit high, and it's going to get out of play just over the fence as Lucas, Darius, and Cody all try and chase it down. So for Taft, three errors in the inning. And the Eagles have made the most of it. Runner on second is... Otis with Kennel at the plate. 0-1 count. Pitch outside, ball one. So Eli trying to get out of this inning now after giving up some runs. Gets another strike on the foul out of play by Kennel on deck, Mason Worth. It will be Vanden Hagen, then the guy that started it all, Sean Riley. The Tigers do not want to see Riley back to the plate here in the third inning. That pitch, outside, ball two. 2-2 two -two count. So it started with the single from Riley here in the inning, then an error by Cody Knott with a runner on base, unsure where he wanted to go, then an error by Darius, and a 4-3 ground out. And Ethan was unable to get that play, uh, that ball out of his glove any quicker. Otherwise, it might have been a double play situation. There'd be two down, then a single from Kutch, a single from Otis. And the Eagles right back in it now. Full count for Eli Kennel at the plate. Eli versus Eli. That was a battle we saw in the first game between the two. As Eli is going to throw to Cody. 
who not ready for it. As Caden calls time, comes out, talks to his pitcher real quickly. So sometimes uh, with those catchers, they want to make sure that they're not perhaps inadvertently giving their pitcher a signal saying to throw back to second base. Sometimes that's a, a play between the pitcher and catcher. The 3-2 now for Eli. And misses outside. So just the second walk of the game for Eli. Brings up the catcher, Mason Worth, who reached via an error back in the top of the second. It didn't hurt the Tigers as Vanden Hagen would fly out to, El or to Ty Fisher, the next at bat. So a quick look at the Sandy M. Christian batting lineup as you've got Mason Worth Vanden Hagen, and then back to Sean Riley, who started the inning off. It's a 5-4 game here in the top of the third. As the Eagles were held scoreless in the first two frames, and after the Tigers put four up on them in the bottom of the second, they've got those four runs back. Taft trying to get out of it now, but they got two on with only one out. So Mason Worth back to the plate. Slight win from center field. And that one hits him. Base is full now for Vanden Hagen, the center fielder. So the Tigers, the first two innings of this game looked great. Here in the third, though, the Eagles have started to come back. Tigers want to clamp back down as they've had three errors in the inning. With a walk, a hit by pitch. And strike called against Hagen on deck, the guy who started the inning, Sean Riley. Double play ball would be great right here. And a check swing rings him up, strike two. So Eli needs a strikeout here in the worst way. Got two in the first inning. And this one's hit hard to Taiyi once again. Comes forward. Here's the crow hop. Throw to the plate. Will go to the plate. Tag is not in time. We're tied at five on the sack fly from Vanden Hagen, who ties it up as Patrick Otis scores from third. So five all here in the top of the third inning as the Eagles have fought back against the Tigers. Tigers trying to get out of it, leave it just that. Our pitch is high to Sean Riley, ball one. For the Tigers, it will be Six, seven, eight back in the bottom half of the inning. That's first pitch called there for DeMello. Has that one fouled out of play? One, two count now. Tenth man to the plate for the Eagles. For the Tigers, they saw nine bat in their last half inning. The one-two. Hit back up the middle. Tai stops. Here's the throw home. And Caden unable to get it. Did he touch the plate? And he did. And the Eagles have now taken the lead with six runs in the third. It's the second single of the inning for Sean Riley, who replaced Joe McKadish, and since then he's been the spark plug the Eagles have needed. 
as Eli Kennel with two outs was taken off the whole time. He scores from second. Mason Worth at second. Riley at first. Josh Verdine at the plate for the second time today. He is the first guy to reach via error. As he hit one to Cody, just misread the play as he thought he could take Sean Riley at third, and in the end, found himself out of options. 2 0 count for DeMello against Verdine with two on. That's a good looking pitch for strike one for Verdine. So, coming up in the bottom of the third for Taft. After being up 5-0, they're going to need to get those bats going against Sean Riley, who came in in replacement of Joe McKadish. This one's hit to Thomas at second, fields it cleanly, makes the toss to Blaze at first, and we are finally out of this inning with the 4-3 ground out. But there are one, two, three, four hits. For the Eagles in that inning, they strand two on the bases, but they score six runs. They now lead the Tigers six to five going into the bottom of the third.
Pitching change is up the top half of the fourth inning. Trenton Fisher comes in to assume the duties on the mound. Eli Vanella goes to short. Cody Knott moves over to second base. Ethan Thomas in left field. And I don't know if that's Jordan Hall in right field. It's Trenton Hall in right field. It's Trenton Hall in right field. That's seven. So for the Tigers uh, pitching change, as Eli DeMello today goes three innings, gives up four hits, six runs, two walks, two strikeouts, one hit batter. As 6-6 six, six game, he can't get a win, can't get a loss at this point. As Trenton Fisher starts off with a ball to Logan Bean here in the top of the fourth. There's first strike for Trenton. So look over Trenton, a 3-7-1 ERA on the season. Has five and two-thirds innings pitch, three strikeouts and three walks. Try to get him to chase that pitch low and away. Ball two for Little Fish. So some of the defensive adjustments. Caden still remains behind the plate. Blaze at first. Cody moves from short to second base as Eli goes from pitching to shortstop. Darius stays at third. He gets Beam whiffing at that one. So 2-2 two -two count now. And then the outfield, Lucas Heinemann comes out. Trenton Hall goes into right field to replace Trenton Fisher on the mound. And then Ethan Thomas goes from second to left. That pitch is low ball three now for Beam. Struck out looking, reached via an error from Darius. And the Tigers hoping he'll be the first out here in the top of the fourth. This one's hit high. Ty's going to have a chance at it in right center field. Chasing, diving, makes the grab. And the catch is out. So the big unit with the big first out of the inning, F8, brings up the second baseman, Ben Galserin. As Galserin 0 for 1 today, he drew a walk. And then he also uh, had a 4-3 ground out back in the third. That pitch outside, ball one, just misses for Trenton. Good pitch for the young man. As the Tigers right now have the strongest middle infield they're going to have on the season with Cody and Eli up the middle there. So they're hoping he can keep anything low. Of course, after the, the big diving catch from Ty e in center, talk about the middle infield making plays for the Tigers here as a little bit of rain coming down here at the pit. This one popped up. As Darius, he's going to call for it, comes forward, makes the catch along the foul line. So F5 for Darius. Two down now for the Tigers, who have responded well after the big six-run top of the third for the Eagles. So it's the first baseman, Ryland Kutch, who's one for two today. And he hits this one to Eli, comes running forward at short. There's the toss to Blaze, and a 1-2-3 inning for the Tigers on the 6-3 ground out. Good results for Taft for Trenton Fisher in relief of Eli DeMello. Coming up, it's going to be the 2-3-4 batters for the Tigers, Eli DeMello, Cody Knott, and Ty Fisher. Trying to give the Tigers a lead here, tied at six, going bottom four.
Oh, what a moron. I had my mic muted that whole time. Tigers are up 7-6 to six following the big play from the freshman Caden Heinemann to get under the throw and tag from Otis, who is just off the mark to Ryland Kutch at first base. That's how the Tigers got their one run. Matt Nosak, the Eagles coach, appealed, uh, but the appeal was upheld in favor of the Tigers, who lead 7-6 to six with Trenton Fisher returning on the mound. So 1-1 one, one count for Patrick Otis. First pitch foul, last pitch ball behind the back from Trenton Fisher. Here's the 1-1, one, one. that one is high, ball two to Otis. It's one for two today with single back in the third. He grounded out to Cody back in the top of the third inning leading off. Tigers hope, same leadoff result here. 2-1 from Trenton, down the middle of the plate, fouled back into the cage. 2-2 two -two count now for Otis. So 2-2, two -two top of the fifth, taft up 7-6. to six. That one misses outside, so full count for Trenton. He's looking for his first strikeout. He had three strikeouts in his one start of the season, so this is his second time on the hill. And he gets him looking for the first out. A great breaking pitch there from Trenton Fisher as the Tigers getting out here in the top of the fifth, bringing up the freshman third baseman, Eli Kennel. He's 0 for 1 today, grounded out to Blaze back in the second. He then scored after drawing a walk in the third. That pitch inside for a ball. As he was batting it in the three spot in the first game, and he saw that and he saw, wait, a freshman. He knew he was going to be a good one. He ended up having the walk-off hit in the bottom of the seventh and an 11-10 victory for the Eagles. One of the things we talked about a little bit today, we'll, we'll pull it up right now. We'll look at this coach's poll here after this first pitch. We'll use the coach's poll rather than the OSAA as Kennel gets all of that one foul. So one, two count. So here's the top 10 rankings with Brookings, then Lapine, Pleasant Hill, who's tied with SC. They each had 55 points. Then it's Taft. Uh, but kind of those four teams so far have looked like the four top teams. Tigers trying to get there as Kennel puts this one into right field as Tigers unable to get to it out there in right as Eli Kennel gets to second 
on a fielding error from Trenton Hall. It's going to be the fifth error of the game for the Tigers in the field. So tying run is on at second base for the catcher Mason Worth. With one down and the top of the sixth. So this is a tape delay broadcast of the Taft Tigers hosting the San Am Christian Eagles. Here at the pit today on an overcast day, going up top the hill over at the high school, the girls are playing the softball game. Tomorrow, Dayton's supposed to come out, barring uh, different plans from Mother Nature. As Tigers scored one in the first, four in the second, and then the Eagles scored six in the third before the Tigers got one to tie it back up in the third. And they took the lead in the bottom of the fourth as this one's hit into a right field and it's going to find no man's land and fall. Kennel, he's going to round third, get the stop to hold. And that is a true single for Mason Worth. And now they've got runners at the corners with one down for center fielder Vanden Hagen, who's gone to Tyee Fisher both times at the plate today. Last time was a sack fly that scored a run. Back in the second, he flied out to end the inning. So Kennel at third, the tying run, worth the go-ahead run. First pitch strike from Trenton. As he got the first out of the inning, strikeout looking. Could use a strikeout here. As Trenton's got four on the season. Gets him swinging for strike two. For Trenton, he's gone seven innings pitched so far on the season, so four strikeouts. Not a flamethrower, but when you had your one, two pitchers were both first team all state last year, it's, it's kind of hard to come back from that. As that one's outside, ball one. And that is part of the adjustment for the Tigers. It's also part of the expectations for the younger players is that we play solid baseball here, and they're playing one of the state's best perennial teams in the Eagles. And this one goes up the middle. Cody's there for it. It's going to take it himself. Throw to first base in time to save it. The 4-3 double play saves the lead for the Tigers as Eli Kennel not able to score in time as the Tigers get out of the inning with a great play from the senior Cody Knott at second base, throwing to Blaze Kimbrough after making the tag all by himself at second. Tigers, they come up now bottom of the fifth. It'll be the 8-9-1 batters. Trenton Hall, Ethan Thomas, and Trenton Fisher. So Trenton Hall leads things off for the Tigers here in the bottom of the fifth inning, swinging strike one against Sean Riley, who continues on the mound for the Eagles. The 0-1 swung on. That looked like a curveball there against Hall. Now finds himself 0-2 on deck. Ethan Thomas and then the leadoff man, Trenton Fisher, And gets him swinging for strike three for Trenton Hall. Ethan Thomas will be next up. 
So for Sean Riley, that'll be his third strikeout of the game. As Ethan comes up swinging first pitch to Eli Kennel, and this time Kennel, a strong throw to Kutch at first, gets the 5-3 ground out. So Trenton Fisher back up. Trying to start a two-out rally for the Tigers and start adding some security runs here as this game starts closing down. Later on we get, it is the bottom of the fifth, not the top of the fifth. Looks at a ball. So Trenton today, one for three. Looking for another base hit. And this one skirts the third base line. Foul. So 1-1 one, one count. Good backhand by Kennel there at first, but would have been a tough throw. So looking at Trenton, he's got 10 hits now on the season so one for three hitting 375 a slight dip in the batting average today but of course with a base hit right here he'll boost the batting average and a knuckler back to riley this will be the fourth out and there's the out the fourth time today that sean riley's got that one three ground out the second time he's done it to trenton so a one two three inning for the eagles as we head to the top of the six, it's a 1-1 game, Taft 7, Eagles 6. So Sean Riley, who's two for two today, will lead off here in the top of the sixth for the Eagles. First pitch swing, and this one's going to be popped up for Tyee in center field, who makes the fly ball out, number one. So that brings up the left fielder now, Josh Verdine, who's 0 for two today. He did reach via error back in the third, and then score, and then in the third inning he would ground out to end the third with the 4-3 that pitch misses outside for a ball so you got Trenton Fisher on the mound throwing to Caden Heineman behind the plate with Blaze Kimbrough at first Cody not at second base strike on the outside corner 1-1 one, one count now Cody at second Darius at third Eli at short and then you've got out in left field, Ethan Thomas, who, then Tyee Fisher in center, and Trenton Hall in right. The 1-1 one, one misses outside for a 2-1 count now. Not much wind coming in from center field at all. As we had a bit of sprinkles a few innings ago, it's cooled down since. And that one just misses high. Of course, Trenton and Josh Verdine, perhaps the two smallest players on the field, so 3-1 count. And it's going to be a five-pitch walk for Verdine as that one misses low and away. So Logan Bean comes up to the plate for the fourth time today. He's 0 for 3 today. He reached on error in the third. He struck out looking to start the game, and then he 
fly, flew out to Taiyi in center. So a little bit of wind coming in from center field right now with one down and one on. First pitch swinging, and it gets by Darius for Beam. That'll be a single at least. It's going to be, it looks like, two as Verdine's now standing up at third and Beam standing up at second. So just one down, the Tigers were able to get a great double play. Right now, though, you don't have any automatic double play possibilities with runners on second and third. Last time that happened, it was runners on the corners. Tigers are going to need something to get an out here that keeps Verdine at third. First pitch to Galserin is outside for a ball. As Galserin is 0 for 2 today, his last at bat, he popped up to Darius. This one's down the middle. It's hit to right field to Trenton Hall, who goes to his right, makes the catch. Verdine's going to tag and score. So it'll be a sack fly to tie the game for Ben Galserin. There's two down. And Logan Bean gets to third. So we're now tied at seven here in the top of the sixth. Two down now for the Tigers. As the Eagles get the tying run in the sixth, trying to hope that's all they get is this one again. Hit out to Tai in center field. He takes this one in right center field. As Tigers unable to get out of the inning unharmed this time, but they're tied now at seven going into the bottom of the sixth. Well, for the Tigers this inning, it's real simple. Score a run, and then you go into the top of the seventh, having to close the game out to get the victory here. Tigers are hoping to score more than one in this inning as they've got their two, three, four batters at the plate as Eli today is looking for his first hit of the season, uh, first hit of the day. He's 0 for 2. Looks at a strike there from Sean Riley, who's been in on relief of the starter, Joe McKadish, today. McKadish went one and two thirds. Riley's gone three and a third so far. Time is called by Eli, who steps out of the box. And this one's hit to center field. It's right to Vanden Hagen, who takes two steps forward, makes the catch for the first out of the inning. So one down now for Cody Knott. So Cody, who is one for two today, had a sack fly in the first, had a two-run single in the second, and then he reached by an error in the fourth. Gets a piece of this one into left field. Verdine turns. It's not going to go out, and Verdine turns and makes the catch F7. So it was a good swing, but it didn't have enough power here with uh, this cold, wet day on the Oregon coast. Maybe in Arizona on a nice hot day, that one's gone, but it's two down now in the bottom of the sixth of the Tigers for Ty Fisher. That pitch outside for a ball. Ty is two for two today with two singles and a walk. He's yet to score, though. Uh, furthest he's gotten is second base. He represents the go-ahead run right now for the Tigers if he can get on. As he calls time. So Ty, as we said, two for two today. Coming in, he was hitting 308, so he now has 
10 hits on the season. As looks at a strike there from Riley. 1-1 one, one count to Taiyi with Blaze Kimbrough on deck. As a bit of wind coming in from center field. Pitch from Riley inside. Taiyi's on top of it, but he's a little too early on that swing. We saw him uh, last inning. He is able to get a single eventually on the at-bat, but he put two right behind and right in front of Coach Hilgers down the third base line. As he calls quick time, steps back in. The one-two for Riley from the windup. And he gets him looking to end the inning. One, two, three. As it's been seven straight batters retired for Sean Riley as Tigers get no hits, no errors, no one left on base. We go to the top of the seventh, tied at seven. You're watching a tape delay broadcast of the Taft Tigers versus the San Am Christian Eagles. So here we are in the top of the seventh inning with Patrick Otis, the shortstop, followed by Eli Kennel, the third baseman, and then the catcher, Mason Worth, tied at seven. Each team trying to manufacture a run. Who can do it will win the game. This pitch hits Otis, and that's not the way you want to start this off as he gets a free base down to first. As he was one for three today with a ground out, a strikeout, or, and a single. Now he's got a hit by pitch. Represents the go-ahead run for Eli Kennel, who thought he, had the go ha thought he had the tying run back in the fifth, but a great double play by Cody Knott ended the threat. As Kennel on the day is 0 for 2 with a walk. Otis takes off. Here's the throw. And it's not in time. Stolen base for Otis. 0-1 count at the plate for Kennel. So Otis 180 feet away. With wind moving from center field towards the right field line. That's how the flag is shaken out. Trenton steps off the hill. Otis goes back to second. No harm done. So Trenton's been pitching in relief of starter Eli DeMello today. As Eli went three innings pitch, gave up four hits, six runs, all back as part of that third inning where the Eagles did most of their damage. So Trenton right now, he's pitched three innings as well. He gets the call here in the seventh. This one's hit hard right to Cody. He's going to run to the bag, doubles him up at second. Otis got caught on the base pass, and again, another double play from Cody Knott. And a great play at the right time for the Tigers. Now all of a sudden gives Vandenhagen two outs as Patrick Otis gets caught on the base pass following the line out. And this one fouled. And it's going to get out of play along the right field side before Trenton Hall can chase it down. But the Eagles were feeling good. And just like that, Cody Knott says, I'm going to haunt you in your dreams. Comes up with his second double play of the game. Tigers, though, want to get out of this inning and then heat the bats up. The 0-1 for Trenton. 
And it's hit back up the middle. This time, Cody can't get to it. So Worth, he gets back on base with a single, his second of the day. So Worth is two for three today with two singles and a hit by pitch. Brings up Vanden Hagen, who has a sack fly. He's got two outs to Tyee in center field, and then he was the one that hit into the four unassisted three double play by Cody to Blaze. The 0-2 fouled high, and that one's going to get out of play. And a great catch by the young fan over there. He's got the jeans on, and you know what? Good play. You can't see it, but there's a nice pallet over there. Did a good job evading that on the grab. So the 0-1 for Trenton with two down here for the Tigers, top of the seventh. Swung, foul, tipped. 0-2 count now for Hagen with Worth at first base. So Tigers want to see something on the ground that the infield can play. A little bit of wind coming in from center field. The 0-2 swung, hit to Eli at short, and it keeps it in front and he can't make the throw in time E6. So he was able to block it, but the block wasn't enough to get it done. So the Tigers, I've got that as the sixth defensive error of the day today. Two outs with runners on first and now second for Sean Riley. As that pitch outside for Riley for ball one. Riley is two for three today with two singles and a run scored and run driven in. His last at bat, he flew out to Tyee in center field. So the 1-0. That one's low and away. Good block by Caden. Tigers just need one more out here, and then they're looking to get a run in the bottom of the seventh. This one inside for strike one, two, one count. So Trenton works himself back in it against his counterpart, Sean Riley. Riley's been kind of a saving grace for the Eagles today in replacement of McKadish. As Coach Matt Nosak is asking if that was a balk. As Riley tried to call time, he stepped out. As a result of it, Trenton stepped off. Coach Matt Nosak is saying that he thought, thought it was a balk. As Nosak is laughing with Coach Hilders about it. As thought it was one or the other. This one's hit. Right field, Trenton Hall, can he get to it? It's against the fence, Trenton hits the fence. Is he okay? He's a linebacker, he pops right back up. He gives the thumbs up to his teammates. But Trenton Hall trying to chase that one down. Fortunately, he appears to be okay out in right field. It's a 2-2 count for Sean Riley with two outs in the top of the seventh inning with two on the bases. It's Worth at second and Hagen at first. Riley at the plate, Verdine on deck with Trenton Fisher on the hill, throwing from the stretch. The 2-2 hit back to Eli at second. Bobbles throws to first. In time for the final out. The 6-3 ground out. This time DeMello gets the play in time. Perhaps he put a little bit of the spicy hot mustard on that throw to make sure it got to blaze in time. But the Eagles, they get one hit. They leave two on the base pass. But we're tied at seven, going bottom seven for the Tigers. It's going to be Blaze, Kimbrough, Caden Heinemann, Darius Smith, unless Coach Hilgers elects to use any pinch hitters here. Bottom seven tied. One run is all the Tigers need.
Well, last time it was two and a half hours of seven inning great baseball that was won in the bottom of the seventh by the Eagles. Tigers right now are looking to win this game eight to seven in the bottom of the seventh inning and see those two games play out exactly the same way in many regards, back and forth. It's going to be up to Blaze Kimbrough leading things off today. He's got three hits on the season with two walks by any means necessary. It's get on the bases right now as he takes the hefty cut, strike one, uh, against Sean Riley, who continues on the mound for the Eagles. So a little bit of wind coming in from center field. Pitch to Blaze. Foul tip into the glove, strike two. So anything close, and it is Caden Heinemann on deck. Can't see who's in the hole, but imagine it would be Darius. That pitch is outside. Kind of pitch you want to see with somebody on the bases the way it got away from Worth there. So one, two count for Blaze. Looking for his first hit of the day, fourth of the season. Tigers want base runners. Inside, check swing, gets away, ball two. As Tigers dug out trying to make some noise for their senior first baseman today. As Blaze probably in line to start tomorrow against the Dayton Pirates. That game happens. This pitch hit to Kennel at third, the one hopper. Double clutch throw to first to Kutch in time for the six or the five three ground out. First out brings up Caden Heinemann, who is one for two today. His last at bat, he had a RBI single. He's also got a strikeout and a walk today. So Caden, the freshman catcher, looking to be the man of the hour right now by getting on base for Taft. And that pitch is outside low for a ball. I'm not sure if the Tigers and Eagles would play extra innings here or not, if that was agreed upon. Still have plenty of light right now. This one's hit to the shortstop, Otis. A little slow dribbler, the throw in time. There's the 6-3 ground out. So back-to-back -back ground outs for Sean Riley, who, as we said, the uh, Eagles have retired the last nine batters in a row. Caden Heinemann was the last one to uh, get on cleanly with a single. So that brings up Darius as he grounded out to Ryland Kutch last inning to end the fourth. As this one's fouled right back into the cage in front of us. 0-1 count now for the sophomore Smith. As this point, home run does it. You're not looking for a home run swing. You're looking to get on base. That pitch low inside, ball one. And on deck is Fico Ramos. There's a strike on the outside corner. One, two count now with two down for Darius. As we said, Fico on deck. One of the areas where Fico's done quite well on the season so far is walks. The Tigers need hits. Darius slaps that one. A chopper. Kennel comes forward. Here's the throw. Darius beats it out in time. And I think he said Kutch came off the bag and that the throw led him off. I'm calling that an infield single for Darius. So Darius gets on the bases for Fico Ramos who steps to the plate. Coach Hilger is going to come talk about this, or he's he's letting him know that Fico is coming in right now. That's what this is about. So Fico would replace Trenton Hall in the lineup, and then on deck is Ethan Thomas. So as we look at, take a quick look at Fico's lineup card. I'm still looking for his first hit on the season. As we said, he's got four walks. Getting on base right now is the name of the game for the Tigers and the sophomore Fico Ramos with Darius Smith at first base. Any wild pitches, Darius is going to take off. We might see Darius take off. Here he does. There's a hit and run. It's going to be a pop-up to Galserin who catches it, though. 
So an F4 for the third out. Tigers get one hit. They strand one on the bases, 7-7. Seven, seven. As we will go, extra innings, top eight. Here, seven innings, not enough for the Tigers. We'll see if Trenton Fisher continues on the mound. It'll be the 9-1-2 hitters for the Eagles, Josh Verdine, Logan Beam, and Ben Galserin when we come back. So uh, our substitution is Fico Ramos comes in for Trenton Hall as Trenton Hall exits the game. Trenton Fisher goes from pitcher to right field. Fico goes from Trenton Hall spot in right field to first and then the first baseman Blaze Kimbrough on the mound against Josh Verdine who bunts and hits that one out of play. It got all the way over the cage. 0-1 count for Blaze. Quick look at Blaze on the season pitching. He leads the team in ERA. He's got four games. This is now his fifth appearance on the season in 11 innings of work. He's got 16 strikeouts. Check swing gets him going there. 0-2 count for Blaze as he is in on relief to close out any thoughts of the Eagles winning this game as Tigers have their senior on the hill, 0-2, and curveball misses for a ball. And then it'll be Logan Beam on deck, who is one for four today, and then Ben Galserin as 9-1-2 here in the top of the eighth inning. We got extra baseball. That one misses high. 2-2 two -two count now for Verdine. As Verdine, he's 0 for two with a walk, but he's got two runs scored. Fouls that one back into the cage. Remains a 2-2 two -two count as... Beam hunts the foul ball down. So extra baseball for the fans that came out to watch this game. That pitch high. So after going 0-2, it's now a full count for Blaze as Verdine fights back. Pitch from Blaze misses outside and again the leadoff man gets on base for the Eagles. In the seventh, it didn't hurt the Tigers. In the sixth, they got the first out, but then they gave up a walk to Verdine, who would come around to score. And that's why we are in extra innings, because of that one run scored there in the top of the sixth for the Eagles. So first pitch strike to Logan Beam. As you can see, the Lady Tiger softball players in front of us I have to ask them about that during the break, how their game went. This one's hit. Cody's going to go to it at second. He's just going to make the quick play at first to get the out. Really didn't have a play available at second to try and take the leadoff runner, Verdine. So a fielder's choice, 4-3. Gets him out at first. So 
So Ben Galserin back to the plate for the fourth time today. He's got a sacrifice in his last at-bat that scored for Dime. He's also popped out to Darius, as well as grounded out to second base, although at the time that was Ethan Thomas who made the play at second. He also had a walk back in the first and then was out on the base, path, base paths due to interference at the plate on a strikeout from Ryland Kutch. 0-1 with one down, top of the eighth. Blaze, breaking pitch, misses high, ball one. So last game between these two teams went two and a half hours, around two hours, ten minutes or so right now. This one's hit foul down the first baseline as Fico got a glove on it, but it was already in foul territory. So one, two count, Blaze looking for a strikeout here with a runner at second. You don't want to see anything advance him any further. So Blaze from the stretch, the payoff, one, two. It's swung, it's hit, Eli collects, throws to first, Fico makes the catch for the second out of the inning, the 6-3 ground out. Brings up the first baseman, Rylan Kutch, who's one for four today. Struck out in the first, an RBI single in the third, grounded out in the fourth, and then he flew out in the sixth. He's got a runner at second here with two outs top of the eighth, and he's swinging strike one. So I'm going to start running out of space here in my scorecard. Tigers, though, hoping to get out of this inning and then make quick work in the bottom of the eighth, go home a victor. This one's hit up the middle. Ty or Eli gets to it, excuse me. Quick throw to Fico. Back-to-back -back ground outs. Eli to Fico ends the inning. We go from top of the eighth to bottom of the eighth. The Tigers need just one run to come away with the victory today. As Tigers... They're going to be sending up the 9-1-2 batters. We'll see if Ethan Thomas continues. Uh, and then it'll be Trenton Fisher and Eli DeMello batting here going bottom eight.
So it's the four, five, six batters. It'll be the shortstop Patrick Otis here in the top of the ninth inning. As a quick update, the Lady Tigers, they won their matchup against the San Diego Christian Eagles 2-1. to one. As Otis, hard hit to center field. Ty takes a few steps towards his left and shags the fly ball for the first out of the inning. So the freshman third baseman Eli Kennel comes to the plate. As we are here in the ninth inning, not sure at what point, as still got more light out, as we'll keep playing. And that one nicks the outside corner, strike one called against Kennel. For the Tigers coming up next Friday, it's going to be a double header against the Warrington Warriors on Friday. So at 3 o'clock, first pitch against the Warriors, and then 5 o'clock expected for a nasty curveball. You might have heard Papa next door to me call out the nastiness of that pitch before uh, the umpire even did, as Dad Jeff saw that strike coming. 0 2 for Blaze here with one out, and that pitch is going to ding him. So that curveball misses. And it's the second hit batter of the game by the Tigers. So another free pass issued puts Kennel at first base with one down for Mason Worth, who is two for three today. He's got two singles, a hit by pitch, and he reached via error. So first pitch misses outside to Mason Worth. And then on deck will be the center fielder, Vanden Hagen. As Tigers did all their damage in the first four innings of the game, as that one's fouled back up out of play, as apparently uh, Tiger, Lady Tiger uh, starting pitcher Emma Coulter She's the one who has had some uh, magic fairy dust over her car that says no foul balls are permitted to hit this one. As I guess we've had two damaged dent cars as Kennel takes off at first. That one's fouled out of play. One, two count now for Mason Worth at the plate. So one down and for the Tigers, uh, that hit batter for Blaze is unfortunate because he had him in an 0-2 situation as well. Hit a guy with a 3-2 count. Yeah, whatever. As can this one find a hole? No. Darius gets there. The throw to second in time for the first, but Cody unable to make the turn to first for the double play. Tigers get the fielder's choice as Darius is going to have a positional switch with Blaze. So Darius looks like he's going to come in. And I think this might be a pitch count thing for Blaze. Um, as Darius is coming on to pitch, Blaze is going to go to first. And then Fico goes and grabs a different glove. He's going to play second. So I think Eli's going to play third here. Cody's going to go back to shortstop. And then Fico's going to play second with Darius on the mound now. So following the fielder's choice, 5-4 ground out. Two outs in the inning for the Tigers will bring up the center fielder Vanden Hagen in a moment as Darius Smith has now come into the ball game. So for Blaze Kimbrough, he's going to go one and two thirds innings pitch today. As to try and take a moment and look at this as he's just got the one hit batter. As he, he faced six batters, he got five outs. So no hits. He is on the hook, though, for Mason Worth. Okay. 
So Darius Smith is making his first varsity appearance on the season. Darius has pitched a JV game so far, as take a few uh, looks at him warming up right now. As you've got the center fielder, Vanden Hagen. It's the 7 8 9 batters, of course. Uh, just two outs right now. And at some point here, I see 650 on my clock. At some point, uh, it's not June just yet for uh, these late games. But Lady Tigers got a 2 1 victory earlier today against the Eagles. The Tigers are trying to hold on here. Right now, they need one more out. Mason Wurst at first base, Vanden Hagen at the plate against Darius. First pitch ball from Darius to Vanden Hagen. So, senior at the plate, sophomore on the mound. Time is called by the umpire as he's having uh, just a quick message with Tigers catcher Caden Heinemann right there. And I think it might be uh, perhaps about how Darius is standing on the hill as Tigers have a turf hill. And so it's not like some of those old dirt mounds that you're used to seeing where somebody digs a trench in front of the rubber to get their perfect positioning. So might have just been a comment from the umpire saying, hey, just make sure your pitcher watches this. As it is, you know, getting a little dark. 1-0 count. This one down the middle and high for ball two. Sean Riley on deck. He's been in relief of the starting pitcher, Joe McAdish, today and kind of was a, a catalyst for SC getting back into this game in many ways. This one's popped up in the infield as Fico unable to get to it as that one popped high. But with only a runner on first, there's no infield fly rule, so it's going to be an infield single for Vanden Hagen. Brings up Sean Riley. So Darius, first pitch, hit, Fico at second, gets it, throws to Eli, makes the out. For the 4-3 ground out, Tigers get out of the inning going into the bottom of the ninth. San Diem Christian 7, Taft 7. We're in for a good one. We'll be here following it to the finish. For the Tigers, it's going to be the 3-4-5 batters, Cody Knott, Tyee Fisher, and Blaze Kimbrough. These are the guys that are going to have to get it done for the Tigers here to come up with the win. And as we said here, look at, uh, here is, we'll pull the uh, Tigers lineup down for you. Take a quick look at Cody's numbers. Uh, on the year, Cody, 375 on the season as a hitter. He is... One for three today with uh, three runs driven in, one run scored. Whether he drives himself in or not, doesn't matter. Tigers just need to get a run across here to come up with the victory today. Here is a look at the coaches' top ten, as we said. Brookings, Lapine, Pleasant Hill, and SC are tied at third. With Taft at fifth, Aragon at sixth, Rainier, who will come out here to the pit on Tuesday, seventh. Warrington, who comes out for a doubleheader on Friday, is ranked eighth. Joseph, who the Tigers beat in the quarterfinals of last year's playoffs, is ranked ninth, and Cascade Christian is ranked 10th. That's in the coaches' poll. That's how the coaches see it. Uh, and you've got nine of those same 10 teams in the OSAA uh, poll, which is what gets used at the end of the season. So Sean Riley, he's going to go off the – practically the distance today as he stands here in the bottom of the ninth against Cody not first pitch swing and Otis gets the scoop stumbles though it's short Cody dives he's safe so a little bit of a stumble from Patrick Otis is all the difference on that play 
as Otis was able to scoop it, but he tried to come up quickly and didn't have the right footing, and that throw just a hair behind. Coach Nosak may be coming out to replace Sean Riley here as might be seeing how much he has left in the tank as it's been a great game. Uh, Riley is going to head out right now with Cody Knott at first and Tyee at the plate. As Mason Worth right there calls out the play defensively real quickly. So it appears to be Patrick Otis I think that's Patrick Otis out there. No, that's Nolan Black who will be entering for Sean Riley. So Nolan Black So Sean Riley on the hook right now for Cody Knott at first base. Nolan Black enters the game as Sean Riley goes six and a third. He only gives up the one run today. Back, or, no, he gives up two runs today. As the four runs were scored in the second, he came in to close out the threat in the second. But good numbers on the day for Sean Riley. For the Tigers right now, it's going to be all about the big unit, Tyee Fisher. He's hitting 308 coming into the day today. He is two for three with two singles. He also has a walk and a strikeout. Right now, Cody not at first base. Probably going to try and let Cody steal second and let him get into a better position, especially with nobody out. You definitely want to let uh, your guys go to work right here. So Tyee comes to the plate here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Let's get that scoreboard looking nice and sharp for you. As big unit steps in, Nolan Black throwing from the stretch, the left-hander. With Cody at first, he's behind the pole there, hidden in your camera view. Tyee shows Bunt. He's going to lay it down. Bunt gets to Black. He's going to go to first. to Kutch gets the out. Cody gets to second. So Coach Hilgers elects to go small ball right off the start. Sack Bunt advances Cody to second base. One down for Blaze Kimbrough, who will now step to the plate. And for the Tigers, want to manufacture a run. At some point, though, you want to see a hit, though. Because if Blaze drops a bunt down here, then it'll be up to Caden Heinemann as they're going to uh, free pass to Blaze. So we saw that last season against Jack Stemple. Teams decided, you know what, we would rather not pitch to Jack, just send you down to first base. So Tigers now have two on for Caden Heinemann. As Eagles perhaps trying to play for a double play as that pitch outside for a ball to Caden. So the freshman, it was a freshman that won the game the first time these two play and Eli Kennel. If Caden Heinemann puts one into center field, he's going to do the same thing right back to the Eagles with Cody not at second. The 1-0. It's in the dirt. Cody, he runs back to second. It's a 2-0 count though for Caden. On deck, Darius Smith. And then in the hole, Fico Ramos. But if Caden gets on the bases, you start running out of options here with how many more batters the Tigers could feasibly face. They score one, it's over. And the 2-0 count becomes a 2-1 as the pitch from Black hits the outside part of the plate. 7-7, bottom of the ninth. The second of two fantastic games played here in the non-league. Caden hits that one out to left field. Verdine, he's going to play for it, makes the catch. Cody, because it's hit out to left field, he's unable to tag up on that one. So now we have two down. 
So Darius with two outs. And it's Darius or Fico. I don't think we're playing 10. I think at that point we stop. But I don't know. Tigers, they just want to get this one up 8-7. Cody's going to steal third, and he gets underneath the tag. So a strike to Darius at the plate. But now Cody not with a stolen base is 90 feet away. Anything that gets past Mason Worth at the plate, expect to see Cody not take off. And Worth is going to call this out. I'm almost amazed at Tigers, and it's perhaps because they don't have that many left, but uh, perhaps try and go for a pinch runner in this situation for Blaze. That's because they know that Blaze isn't the out, isn't the runner that matters for the Tigers. It's about Cody Knott. If he crosses that plate safely, they're going to win this game 8-7. to seven. So Kutch at first, holding Blaze on. Darius swings. Foul tip. 0-2. Oh, so I think this is the game right here. I don't know if we're playing 10 or not. Tigers are either going to win this or tie, I believe. And that one misses as that is outside. Worth, it was practically set up halfway outside of his catcher's box. A 1-2 count for Darius. Anything close, he's got to protect. He gets a base hit, though. It's game over. Tigers will win. Blaze takes off. This one's hit, and it's foul. The Tigers are going to say, you know what? If you're going to keep Blaze all alone there, we'll, uh, we'll just send him. Try and send this one in motion. 1-2 count here for Darius Smith. 0's looking for a base hit, trying to go sploosh. 1-2, pitches high. Blaze is going to steal second. No one's there. They're not worried about it. Blaze, not his first stolen base of the season either. 2-2 two -two count, though. For Blaze, it doesn't matter. He kind of almost wants to just sit at second base. Darius pops this one up. If Hagen catches this, this game will go down as a tie. Or we're going to keep playing 10. We're going top 10. We are not done playing baseball. Tigers got as far as 90 feet away. So it'll be the left fielder, Josh Verdine, who's made a few good catches out in left field to end a few Tiger threats. It's 9-1-2 for Darius Smith on the mound for the Tigers here in the top of the 10th, and he start, starts Verdine off with a strike. First varsity pitching action of the season for Darius, who as a sophomore has pitched in a few of the JV games on the season. As that pitch is misses outside, it's almost got a bit of a hitch in the delivery there, which 
It's similar to uh, Seattle Mariners pitcher, you say Kukechi, who's got the, kind of the hold up with the leg. As Darius pauses, there's the throw inside, gets him swinging, strike two to Verdine. New Verdine has reached base three times today. He's got two walks, a ground out, and reached by an error. And for a nine batter, you know, reach three or four plate appearances is good. That one is high. This is plate appearance number five today for Verdine. So after this, it'll be the sixth time through the lineup for the Eagles in the top of the 10th. That pitch is high. So a full count here for Darius. Three two. And it misses. Third walk of the day for the nine batter, Josh Verdine. He's reached base four of the five times he's come to the plate. And Tigers are gonna have to go after Logan Beam right now. Is one for five. He's looking to bunt to try and get Verdine down to second. That one goes foul. So it gives you a bit of an idea of what Coach Matt Nosak wants to do. He's trying to manufacture one run here as well. The 0 1 swung, fouled into the cage is Verdine. Heads back, and this time now two strikes for Logan Beam at the plate. He struck out first at bat of the game looking to Eli DeMello. He reached by error in the third, flew out to Taiyi in the fourth, had a double in the sixth, and a fielder's choice ground out in the eighth. This pitch inside misses for a ball, one two count. So over two and a half hours have gone by of baseball here today. Fans definitely got more than they paid for. So over a two and a half hour game last time. Here's a pitch out, and or it wasn't a pitch out. It was just a ball. Verdine gets the easy stolen base, as that one looked like it came out of the glove a little wrong for Caden. So a 2-2 count. I got it as a full count. Or yeah, it is a 2-2 count. I was looking at Verdine's scorecard. Down the middle, swung, fouled, out of play. Remains 2-2 for Logan Beam. On deck, Ben Galserin. He's 0 for 3 today, but he does have a sack bunt and a walk. A 2-2 pitch, fouled back once again by Beam. As I'm looking at our camera right now, to, and it makes it look like it's a little bit lighter out than it really is here. Perhaps that's some of our lighting inside the booth. As that pitch outside, so another full count here for Darius. So Tigers, they brought Blaze Kimbrough in, but... I think they had Blaze on a strict uh, pitch count as the Tigers have league play coming up as well as potential game tomorrow against Dayton. Here's the full count payoff, and it's fouled once again by Beam. At least the third foul pitch. So the Tigers, Caden Heinemann behind the plate, Blaze Kimbrough at first, Fico Ramos second, Cody Knott at third, Eli DeMello at shortstop, and left field is... Ethan Thomas, center fielder Trent, or Tyee Fisher, right fielder is Trenton Fisher. Full count for Beam, and he gets beamed. Now a hit by pitch. So two on the bases for Ben Galserin. As I bring up the, the light issue, if only because I look outside and it's a little bit darker, but we're here in the top of the 10th inning. 
As Galceron, the lefty, steps in, and that pitch is outside. Hyman does a good job of saving that. Because if that gets away from him, Verdine's down at third base. Instead, he stays at second with a 1-0 count for Galceron at the plate. A little bit of wind coming out from center field, moving towards right. Not much, though. Pitch inside, misses again for a ball. So we'll see if the Tigers ride Darius out here. If he, if he struggles, if Coach Hilders might make a change. The 2 4 Zero. And again, misses, and another good job by Caden behind the plate. But unfortunately for the Tigers, it's now a 3 0 count for Galserin. So here's the payoff for Darius. Down the middle for a strike. So ideally, Ben Galserin hits a grounder right to Cody Knott, who steps on the bag and then fires to first for a double play. See if it plays out that way or not. Here's the 3-1 for Darius. And it's swung. It's hit. Will this drop? Ty's going to chase it down. It does. Verdine held up. Here's the throw to third. And the force out. It was a force out. And was Cody's foot not on the bag? Apparently not, because with runners at first, second, and third, it's not a tag, it's a force, and the throw brought him off, so it's a single for Ben Galserin that loads the bases now for Ryland Kutch. From our angle, hard to say, but play dump, obviously, the field dump, much better view of where it was at. That one is outside for a ball. So 1-0 count for Kutch, who is 1 for 5 today. And swing and strike one there. Tigers not in a good spot right here. They've got to dig themselves out as bases are full with nobody out. All the infielders have their toes on the grass. Anything hitting the infield has to go home. Fouled strike two. That's one way to get yourself right back into it, get to a two-strike count, and then try and get the strikeout on deck is Patrick Otis, the senior shortstop. It's the sixth time through the lineup today for the Eagles hitters. Scored seven runs. And he gets the strikeout. So Patrick Otis now steps to the plate with the bases loaded and one out here in the top of the 10th inning. Extra baseball. End up going three hours today. Like a real professional baseball game. First pitch to Otis, hit high. As Trenton Fisher is going to come running in, and is it foul? It barely is. Wow. So Otis goes back to the plate with an 0-1 count. As that one almost found the spot where they ain't, but it's just outside the first baseline rather than inside. The 0-1 count here for Patrick Otis. This is inside, and you got no spot to put him, so if you tag him or walk him, that means Josh Verdine, who got a leadoff walk, would come around to score, and he represents the go-ahead run at third. Pitch misses outside, ball two. It's a 2-1 count, top of the 10th inning, tied at seven between the Eagles and the Tigers. Darius Smith on the mound, 2-1 count. That pitch is high. So this has got to be a strike for Darius on this pitch. The 3-1 down the middle, and it's high. 
RBI walk for Patrick Otis. It's the third free pass of the inning issued for the Tigers. And now it is the Eagles 8 and the Tigers 7. So the Eagles have taken the lead here in the top of the 10th. Tigers have yet to score a run since the third, since the fourth. As that one gets by Caden, and it looks like it's going to score another. This time it is Logan Beam. And now the Eagles have put two up on, on the board with just one out. It's a 9-7 to seven Eagles lead as Tigers are finding themselves in a hole here late. Can they get back out of it? As they're playing without Cameron Kessler. And it looks like they may be playing the rest of the season without Cam. Darius on the mound in this situation. And that pushes everybody up in the pitching rotation as a result of that. Eli Kennel, a freshman at the plate with ball one. Runners second and third. That pitch is low ball two. I have it as a 2 0 count. Board shows it as 3 0. As my, looks like I'm seeing action from the Eagles side over in their dugout. Someone getting loose. Strike called against Kennel. So it is a 3 1 count for Eli Kennel at the plate. Now Patrick Otis at second. Ben Galstrin at third with the Eagles leading the Tigers 9 to 7. And Eli Kennel gets rung up with the strike on the inside part of the plate that he thought was ball four. Already started taking off down the base path. So another full count for Darius. It's his third full count here of the inning. And he gets him looking. Kennel argues with the play dump. Didn't like that call. Brings up Mason Worth, the catcher. He's got two singles today a hit by pitch reached by error back in the second so he is two for four and his five plate appearances that pitch is a strike from Darius who's starting to find some rhythm for the Tigers though if they can get out of this with the two runs given up they're going to need to find a whole lot of rhythm behind the plate down nine to seven and he gets him out in front, swing and strike two. So Lady Tigers won two to one earlier today in the softball game against San Am Christian. Right now, it's a two run lead for the Eagles here on the top of the seventh. Darius Smith, the 0 2 count, and it's hit the other way hard. It's fair. That's going to score Galserin and Otis 11 to 7 as he heads over to second base with. A uh, two RBI double for Mason Worth, who's got his third hit of the game, extends the lead now 11 to seven for the Eagles, who go up against the Tigers with four runs in the top of the 10th inning. So Vanden Hagen at the plate here in the top of the 10th with a runner at second and a four-run lead. The Eagles may have closed the door on the Tigers after that one. Pitch is outside for a ball. For the Tigers in the 10th inning, it will be the 8-9-1 hitters coming up with Fico, Ethan, and Trenton. So if they can bring it back through the middle of the lineup, the Tigers may have a chance, but down four and still not out of it yet. They're going to have a lot of work to do. The 1-1 one, one from Darius. It's the outside part of the plate. Second strike for Vanden Hagen. As Vanden, in his fifth plate appearance of the day, got his first hit. As the first batter that Darius faced back in the eighth inning, or ninth inning, excuse me. So 
So the one two count with pitcher Nolan Black on deck. This one popped up. It's got a chance for Trenton in right field if he can get to it in time, and he does for the final out of the inning. Four runs scored for the Eagles as they leave one on the base path. And they did it with three walks to only two hits. They scored four runs as Tigers coach Hilger is going to talk to his players. Nolan Black will continue on the mound as we go bottom 10. 8-9-1 for the Tigers when we come back. Here we are in the bottom of the 10th inning. Tigers need to score four runs leading off. Sophomore Fico Ramos. Can that one get over the head of Galserin? It can. There's the first hit that the Tigers need. They're going to need a lot of them here. They want to win. They're going to need five runs. So in steps Ethan Thomas, who's got two ground outs to the third baseman, Eli Kennel, today, as well as a double and a strikeout. So he's one for four. This is his fifth at bat. We mentioned that the Eagles, they were in their sixth time through. Hit to Otis, turns to Galserin, who's unable to get it. And did he call him safe? No, they say he dropped it on the transition. So it'll be a fielder's choice ground out. On the 6-4 ground out. So one down for the leadoff hitter, Trenton Fisher. Trenton's got a single, an RBI single, back in the second. He is one for five today. Black. That pitch is in the dirt. Good block, though, by Mason Worth to keep, feet, or keep Ethan back at first base. As not a big lead for Ethan at first base right now for the Tigers it's going to be a combination of base hits that get them back into this game trailing by four in the bottom of the 10th inning a 2-0 count now if there's any salvation for the Tigers it's that the Eagles were able to manufacture some runs in the bottom of the seventh inning the first time these two teams played I've got Eli DeMello on deck with Cody Knott in the hole. They're going to go back to first as Kutch blocks it, keeps it in front, and Thomas remains at first base. So a 2-0 count now for Trenton at the plate. Looking to get on by any means necessary right now for the Tigers. That pitch gets the outside part of the plate. Strike one. So we're approaching three hours of baseball here today between the Tigers and the Eagles, which is what makes me uh, weary of some of these uh, doubleheader games, like next Friday's doubleheader against Warrington in eight days. Is that pitch down the pipe for a strike? 2-2 two -two count for Taft. It's got a do anything to protect right now. They're down to their final two outs, trailing 11 to seven. They got the top of the lineup though. 
with the leadoff man Trenton Fisher trying to get Ethan Thomas and himself on base. There's a hit to Otis. Can he turn two? There's the scoop to Galserin, the toss to Kutch, and not in time for the fielder's choice, 6-4. So two down for the Tigers as Trenton's at first base with Eli DeMello coming to the plate today. It's his sixth plate appearance today and reached on error back in the first, had a walk in the second. He's got two runs scored. For the Tigers, they've been quiet since the fourth inning today. Since they went up 5-0, they've been outscored 11-2. That one gets away. Trenton's going to get down to second on the passed ball. But again, for the Tigers, Eli just represents run number nine, potentially. Cody represents run number 10 with Tai, the tying run with two down. They've all got to come across for the Tigers. 1-0 count for junior Nolan Black. The lefty from the stretch, swung on by Eli, misses it, 1-1. One, one. So maybe General Electric could uh, provide a nice sponsorship of lights because it's been a good game so far and it's one of the things the Tigers do need. That pitch is high, ball two. Eagles have the all-turf infield and outfield. Tigers just the all-turf infield. Neither school, though, has a set of lights. And you always want to be able to let the high schoolers play under the lights. It's a fun experience. This one swung. Chopper, can it get past Otis? He collects the two-hopper throw to first in time for the final out. As the San Am Christian Eagles, they fall down 5-0 to zero after two innings, and then they fight their way all the way back after 10 innings. This one is settled. It is the San Am Christian Eagles 11, Taft Tigers 7. San Am Christian goes to 7-2 and two on the season. The Tigers go to 3-6. and six. I believe the winning pitcher of note will be Nolan Black, and Darius Smith will get the loss today as if weather allows it, we'll be playing the Dayton Pirates tomorrow. So that does it for our tape delay broadcast. We'll see you tomorrow potentially. Stay tuned for more information on Twitter and YouTube. Thanks for taking part in this tape delay broadcast between the Tigers and the Eagles as Lady Tigers won today. Uh, they go to seven and two on the season, I wanna say as well with the two to one victory, but the boys, they lose 11 to 7. We'll see you then tomorrow, potentially, or Tuesday against Rainier. That'll do it for us, Tiger fans. Take care.